God created both the physical and the spiritual. Just in the physical, you got creatures in the physical, you got creatures in the spiritual. And that's what we call angels. In Hebrew, they're called malach, which means a messenger, also means an angel. <laughs> It's so easy and we make it hard We put up walls and we put up guards We stray off boulevards and lose our tracks We think too much and we complicate What should be simple, true and straight Just take a tip from nature and relax The wind has nothing to do but blow The flowers have nothing to do but grow the sun has nothing to do but shine The hills have nothing to do but tang The fish have nothing to do but swim The earth has nothing to do but spin And I got nothing to do but be with you I haven't had any experiences that would give me a feeling that there are angels, but um, I believe in the blue sky. I believe in snowflakes. I mean, I believe in beauty in general. I've seen one or two, you know, but uh, I was doing drugs at the time, so I don't know if it was real, you know. I believe in angels um, because I believe in God. For a seen? while, for a while, I did not believe in God, but I do believe in God. But there's something out there that's beautiful and that's why I'm probably most likely, probably why I'm alive right now. But it's, it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing, you know. We could use a few here, it would be nice. Because there's something out there, which is probably an angel, which helped me, which is my, uh, my wife, which is uh, Maxine. Thank you very much. Okay, there you are right here, I think. No? No. Here you go. Here you go, right here. Okay, this man is, uh, I believe, is his son of, of uh, Thomas Cole. And uh, this is just one of the many of the people who are buried here. There are over on the other side. There are so many other famous artists in the history of art, but this mainly is just full of artists in Woodstock. If you go and you turn right over here, you'll see the residents of Woodstock who are buried across the other way. They're, they're buried on the other side. And here are the artists. Because there's just so many artists here, so many artists and musicians here, it's just, it's unbelievable. They somehow like to come on this to Woodstock, this one mountain. Encircled by the everlasting hills, they rest here, who add it to the beauty of the world by art, creative thought, and by life itself. For centuries, many of our, our people, we fished along these, these, uh, this river. It was a, uh, a very spiritual, uh, we shared. Uh, there was no dividing uh, a land or rivers. It was, uh, it was fantastic. But now it's, you know, it's not as, you know, and this goes all the way up to Albany. It goes on and on and on. It's huge. It's a gigantic river. Um, 
it's no longer what it used to be. Right now we have, of course, many houses all along. We were fighting pollution with peat seeger and now it's, it's a, a lot more fish are, are coming up that we've never seen before. And I've been working with Pete Seeger since 1969. And uh, what I've been basically doing is uh, continuing on. We have a Sloop Clearwater uh, organization. Any kind of uh, uh, pollution corporations that we see are polluting the river, we stop them. This is where I live. This is, I moved here about a year ago. And um, because there's a lot of artists, musicians up here, a lot of my friends, and um, it's quite beautiful up here, especially in the summertime. Okay. okay. Now we can kind of see. Well, this is my home. We could. Uh, what I do is I also work in science. I belong to the um, Electrostatic Society of America, and it's, it's, it's a group of scientists um, that uh, study the electrostatic force. We strongly feel it's the electrostatic force uh, creating gravity. And um, what we're doing is we have actually been collecting facts you know, from scientists to show that it definitely is the electrostatic force and the repulsion field lies underneath the balloon that we live on. Um, this is a, uh, I received a patent from Washington, D.C. And it's a, it's a, uh, very few people ever get to see a real patent, but I'll show it to you, okay? This is a patent um, that I did on an electrostatic meter. Here's my name, and I received it last year. Okay, it picks up uh, electrostatic force from most anything, but also it also does pick it up from human beings. Um, actually, uh, the uh, the invented meter is actually right here. It's not in operation right now because I'm working on another project, but I will. I will. Um, I will present this. In the nighttime, it glows, and then in the daytime, you can see rainbows. I don't know if you can see the rainbows in there. Can you see the rainbows? But it likes to crash into walls. This has been all over national news. In fact, world news. So uh, one of the one of the many things we're working on, you know. So, but in the nighttime, it's a it's fantastic. It glows at night. So, okay, this is a painting I've been working on. I'm gonna have a lot of spirits flying all over. It's 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 gonna be about a. Uh, the reason why I'm painting this is because uh, there's a song of Tom Pacheco's called uh, Mystery Hill, and it's about all these spirits flying in the winter time past you know the uh, the houses and so this is one of the many of the paintings that I've been working on and this is my music this is my guitar then John Hammond senior I don't know if you know who he is John Hammond senior um, is a very famous record producer he uh, he found uh, Bessie Smith Billy Holiday uh, Duke Ellington, he found uh, Bob Dylan, he found Bruce Springsteen, and he actually made a record of me, but I don't think I, I never did, um, I didn't sign, I didn't sign the record contracts, but this is um, Columbia Recording Studios, and this is uh, uh, John Hammond Sr. who recorded me, and let me see, uh, Few other ones but he always he always uh he wanted to sign me but i never i never signed it i just left <laughs> one of the things is that um when you know about nature or let's take uh for instance like a um, a crow a crow sometimes uh if you if you know about them they have a territorial thing and they keep in good communications with each other 
Let's say if, a, a, if an ego comes in their territory, what they do is they basically are communicating with each other. And, and you hear, like, let's say there's one over here, it'd be, <coughs> and then from far away, you'll hear another one. <coughs> then all of a sudden, they know that there is a bird that's not supposed to be in their territory. And then you will see immediately the uh, uh, ego give a cry to uh, his mate, like, I can't do it real good, but, but um, you know, my voice is <laughs> kind of out of it. But um, when they give that kind of a sound, what happens is that the other partner knows to get to, to, to leave immediately. But usually, <clears throat> what will happen is like, uh, uh, what will spark the whole thing is sometimes a, a small bird will already start giving the information to the crows. And then from the crows, it'll go to the e to the eagles, and from the eagles, it'll they'll they'll immediately get out, and and that's basically it's knowing the communications with animals, and and what they're saying. They're they're always they're talking, they're telling you something, and you have to listen real close. I believe that there's uh, somebody up there looking over you while you're alive on the earth. And you'll probably find out about it after you're gone. Yeah, we do believe in it, Joe. You know, for what you're doing with yourself. Never seen one or talked to any. I just believe that there is some. I just know they exist. I don't have any particular experience of angels. No. And I feel bad because some people do, and I wish I did. I don't think I'm as optimistic as some people are. You know, you have to be almost spiritually optimistic. And I'm not a spiritual optimist right now. In fact, I'm a spiritual pessimist. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I met people from all over the world, and I asked them all the time, of all the places that you could go, what brought you to Woodstock? And they say it's, uh, it's known all over the world, probably known more of other countries than in the United States, although I know it's kind of hard to imagine that, but it's a small little town. We can go from one end of town to the other. It's not very long. That's one of the things most people ask me is, you know, we thought the town was bigger. Is it, you know, does it spread out? And it's, no, it's really just Mill Hill Road and uh, Ticker Street through the town, and then, of course, in the little side areas. But the energy of this area is a strong energy, and that's one of the reasons why, I guess, when White uh, Whitehead decided to find a place he had tried in California, but it didn't seem right. And that's when he came here. So I guess it's the whole environment. It's an old area. It's been around uh, millions and millions of years, the mountains have. And it's just, I guess, the energy of things. It's a looser way of living. Uh, people that don't care to live in a city, I guess this is what draws them here, those things. And friendliness. People are pretty friendly. Once they, you know, they know you, and they're usually, how you doing? Or I guess I was one of those people that ran away and became a hippie. But I did service. I didn't have to worry. I was already out of the service by 1970. I was young. I was only 19 years old, and uh, I'd come out of a city, Newark. I joined the Navy when I was 17. I had already gotten out of. High school, I'd been out of high school, graduated high school, I was only 16, so I wasn't about to go to college, it wasn't my thing. So I kind of banged around and took simple little jobs, I guess, I worked in a department store. And then when I was old enough, I enlisted in the Navy. And then I went to Vietnam, I was 19. And stayed there until uh, I was on a patrol and um, our boat was hit by a rocket, I was shot, shot twice. And uh, then it was all over from that. It was a series of hospitals for about 17 months worth. 
and then came out and went to school, used the GI Bill to go to school, and banged around the country for a while and had some some serious kind of jobs. And then uh, I started to work in the healthcare field. So and now it's uh, I met Tom up here, and I guess that's pretty much <laughs> what's been going on for 30 years or so. Brand new century. Early afternoon. This is our first heavy snowfall. And the dogs are inside. Oh, the puppies. Hello, dog. Hello, dog. Hello. Come here. Here, man. What's new? Come here. All right. Give me a treat. Stay there. Give me a treat. I think we have. We have a treat for the dogs. We have one for you. And we have one for you. How's that? Nice sun porch when it's cleaned up. But they pretty much hang out here. This is it for this kind of weather. Otherwise, with three dogs, the house would look like this. So we keep them out here. I say for, a, in a, for the hundred miles that it is from New York City, it's certainly a lot different than New York City, if you're familiar with New York City. And it's freer and it's open and I can have chickens, which is something that ever since I was a little kid, I kind of liked chickens roaming around. It reminds me of uh, when I look out the window from time to time of my grandmother and our chickens. But it's just free for me to be in, in Woodstock. Uh, to show you, these are uh, the tickets from Woodstock. Uh, the ones on the bottom are, as you can see, 69 Festival, and this is from the 94 Festival. At the time, I was uh, working in, this, in New Jersey, and uh, some friends of mine said, there's going to be this big happening up in the mountains, and we should get some tickets, and there could be some good rock and roll. So uh, we got the tickets, and I had taken a day off from work and got up there on a Thursday night. The festival was due to start uh, Friday, but they needed some help uh, working on the stage. And uh, they said, if you can bang a, hang a hammer, you can go out on the stage and help out building this thing. So that's how I got to keep my tickets. They never collected them from me, and I kind of had like a, a job working on the stage. And then soon after, I left and headed out for the Hippie Haven in Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco, California. After 50, you're kind of sliding another way. I guess you, the main part of your life for me anyway was, you know, from when I was young till now. And now, I don't know how much time I have left on the planet, but it's kind of like, for me, it's kind of like a smoothing out period, I guess you would say, from, I guess, running around and having all that youthful energy, but uh, to try to use the energy in a different way now. And uh, I say, this is my paradise here. I knew we'd have it. I knew it was somewhere. Norway. Hmm? But what I'm going to make you is some soup. It's a big vegetable soup we have going here. But on a miserable rainy day, in, the, on the, uh, in January here, soup is good. So we'll have some soup. And that's a public access television show I do on Wednesday nights. Uh, from 10 uh, p.m. to I can go to 1 o'clock in the morning if I choose so. A couple of hours worth, three hours if I want, or as limited as I want. It's, uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years. And, and then to get me live, just drop this back down, right, Mike? Um, yeah, that's your, that's your visual, that airplane toggle, and this is your audio over here. Yeah, hang out. Man. It's that light behind you. If you can kill the TV right there. That okay. one? Yeah, you're on. 
How you doing, Woodstock's Mix Glacio, Public Access Television, Channel 3, right here in little old Woodstock on Rock City Road. Uh, some things tonight, we're gonna let you know uh, about the, the Chief of Police resigning. How do you like that, the Chief of Police resigned? Woodstock has uh, lost another police chief. Uh, chief Brewster says he's quitting. Uh, Wilmer said Brewster had yet to file a formal letter of resignation, but I do have that. I do have the, the, the letter here. And this is his res uh, resignation, and this is Chief Brewster's resignation. Oh, is it this camera over here? If we're going to this one, I'm going to right. this one here. I'm going to do a digital zoom. Through it. Let's see. And there we go. Wait a second, got to get the digital Mike's zoom. working on this, folks. Okay. That's about as good as you can that's get. That's about as good. Mike says that's about as good as you can get it. But it says Town of Woodstock Police Department. And the final signature says sincerely, Chief Edward Brewster. And here it is. But you'll get, I guess you'll get this whole thing in the paper sooner or later. But Chief is leaving us. It's a hot little town, Chief. You know, a lot of things happen in this little town, and you have to kind of fit in. Some people said that the Chief was, uh, he was great at what he did as far as uh, maintaining law and order, but he didn't kind of like fit in with the, the people here. So uh, I guess Chief is on his way to bigger and better things. Don't lose faith in Channel 3, folks, and don't lose faith in our producers. Me. You know me, folks. You know me out there. You know me. You know how I feel about stuff. No censorship. I try not to have any kind of censorship down here. I have a, 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 a film. It deals with uh, communication with the spirit world, you know. Why not Woodstock, right? So uh, I'll try to get this thing working, and, uh, and we'll let it run for a while, and I guess we'll hang out at the studio. If and when we ever pray that God sends the angels and they come and they pick up all the prayers and gather them and bring them to the darkest corners of the earth for light. And here's bells. <laughs> They're my pocket ringing. <laughs> and just God is good and everything is good and God's wish be done. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Want me to take one of you? Some of us call them spirits, some of them, uh, some of us call us angels, some of them souls or ghosts. There's many names for these spirits, but um, uh, to, to our people it's basically uh, the spirits. Maybe there's an angel that makes you laugh and makes you happy, and uh, maybe there's an angel when you bump your knee. It's special energy. Oh, back to the question again. So you asked me if I believed in angels. Wow, I believe in human angels. That's the, f the thing I didn't think of. And I even know people in Woodstock who I would call angels. Even a man, I know one man who's like an angel. Mostly it's women that I, that I think of as angels. They have such good hearts. They're so creative in their way of looking at life and they keep me from committing suicide. That's why I call them angels. Although I'm not that suicidal, but... I said the wind has nothing to do but blow The flowers have nothing to do but grow The sun has nothing to do but shine The hills have nothing to do but shine The fish have nothing to do but swim The earth has nothing to do but spin And I got nothing to do but be with you And I got nothing to do but be with you Well, that's about I, as much as I know about fairies. Yeah.